In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how the chord length parameterization is calculated. And we'll also look at a third parameterization method called centripetal. So what exactly is the chord length and how is it calculated? Well, technically, the chord length is the straight line distance between any two given points on an arc. So in this example here, we could specify any two points around the perimeter of this circle, and the straight line distance between them would be the chord length. In the case of the NURBS parameterization method, the chord length is a straight line drawn between the breakpoints. And we can easily visualize this by converting the NURBS curve to a polygon curve. So to do that, I'll drop down a convert node after this curve node. And in this convert node, I want to convert to polygons, which is the default option. And then I'll come over to this divisions per span tab. And in here, we've got options for the U and V divisions per span. And we'll get to the V dimension in a few lessons time when we look at NURBS and Bezier surfaces. But in the case of curves, we're only ever concerned about the U dimension. I'll drop the divisions per span down to zero. And now we see that we have a straight line polyline drawn from breakpoint to breakpoint. The chord length of this entire NURBS curve is the sum of all these straight lines. The length of one of these lines is the chord length of that curve segment. And on a NURBS curve, we call this segment between the breakpoints a span. I'll just move my display flag to the parameterization example node again, and I'll set this convert node to a template flag. When we choose the chord length parameterization method, the length of the spans between the knots in parameter space is proportional to the chord length of the spans in 3D space. So this span here between these first two knots in parameter space is proportional to this chord length in 3D space here. This span in parameter space here is proportional to the chord length or the point to point distance of this span here. And it's the same for this span and this span. So we can see that's how we end up with a distribution of knots in parameter space, which more closely matches where we're positioning those breakpoints in 3D space. We're calculating those knot coordinates based on the relative straight line distance between the breakpoints. Now, under this parameterization dropdown in the curve node, we do have a third option, which is centripetal. And this is a pretty similar method to the chord length method, but it tends to be more useful if we want to have a more angular curve, which turns corners more sharply, but still smoothly. So for example, if I drop down another breakpoint by this breakpoint here, we see we get straighter segments on the longer spans, and then through these shorter spans, the curve turns a reasonably tight corner. If I change the parameterization back to chord length, we see we get a much smoother arcing interpolation of the curve between the breakpoints. If I change it back to the uniform parameterization, we get a fairly flat straight curve in the longer spans, and then we get that looping of the curve between the breakpoints, which are closely spaced in 3D space. If we look at the parameter space, while I change the parameterization method between chord length and centripetal, we see that they have a similar knot distribution. With centripetal, we get slightly shorter spans for these longer chords and slightly longer spans between the shorter chords. And this makes sense in terms of the shape we get. If I copy this curve node and I'll set the parameterization of this copy to chord length and I'll enable the template flag on it, we can compare the curve shape that the two methods create. We can see that with this centripetal method, by shortening the longer spans in parameter space, we're able to flatten out the arc of the curve between those longer chords in 3D space to some degree. It's as though the length of the span in parametric space fits the point to point distance more closely. And so the curves pull more tightly between those breakpoints. By increasing the relative distance of the shorter spans in parametric space, we're able to give the spline a bit more length in 3D space to be able to take a wider arc around that corner. Technically, the centripetal method is still using the chord length to calculate the distribution. But rather than it being directly proportional to the distance between the breakpoints, as it is with the chord length distribution, it's proportional to the square root of the distance. The maths isn't really the important thing here, though. What's important to know is that the centripetal parameterization method is useful for creating curves with longer flatter sections and tighter radius corners. So let's a look at the different parameterization methods that we have available when working with breakpoints and how they influence the automatic positioning of the control vertices and ultimately how they influence the shape of the curve. 